Good afternoon. Today we are continuing in the thought of faith. This is everyday living faith. Sometimes our lives are very exciting. Sometimes they are extremely difficult. And sometimes they are just routine, but they are necessary. We don't kill a giant every day. We don't break out of prison every day. But we do live for God every day, and it takes faith every day. Jesus was speaking to his disciples lessons one day about how to get along with people, and it provoked a conversation between Jesus and his disciples, and the conversation went a little deeper than what just their question was. Let's look at 10 verses in Luke chapter 17. It says, Then he said to his disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be plucked up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. And which of you, having a servant plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? But will he not rather say to him, Prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk and afterward you will eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all of those things which you are commanded, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Jesus was carrying on a conversation with his disciples, telling them some things that they needed to know about how to get along with people, and also about the impossibility of how it is to go through this life without facing severe difficulties. And sometimes these difficulties come because we interact with people. They get angry with us, and we get angry with them. And so as Jesus began to speak about the necessity of facing people when we have these difficulties, the disciples made the comment to Jesus, Jesus, increase our faith. Yes, we do need faith when we engage difficult circumstances. We need faith to have the courage to face people. Also, we need to have faith to know how to face them. Faith is necessary for every part of our life. Then at the end of that, after they asked for faith, Jesus talked to them a little bit about the routine issues of life, what could seem to be boring for us. But he says we just must be disciplined in this life. First of all, everyday living, how to face difficult people. We do need God's wisdom, and also we need the gentleness of the Holy Spirit because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is our helper. The Bible tells us how to engage people. Paul told Timothy how to engage people that were difficult. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, 24, 25, and 26. Paul says to Timothy, The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of truth that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. The first thing that rises up in any of us when we have an opposition against someone, they've hurt us, done something wrong to us, is like an anger begins to build. And we want to engage them sometimes in a, a spirit of anger and hate and resent and getting even. But the Holy Spirit was telling Timothy, don't be quarrelsome. In fact, the Bible says, if at all possible, live peaceably with all people. But it dis, did say, confront them, get everything out in the open, and work things out in this life. 
It says we are to correct with gentleness. Also, in this gentleness, exert self-control. Because sometimes when you're trying to heal a relationship, they are not wanting to heal. They'll come back at you and say something aggressive towards you and just grab a hold of your spirit. We need self-control. But also it says we need to be ready to give forgiveness. And if we'll give forgiveness and forgive people, use gentleness, we will escape the snare of the devil. The devil puts traps in our life. And he wants us to bite on the, the, uh, the issue of anger. He wants us to resent people. He wants us to hate people. And he wants us not to forgive people. And Jesus tells us unforgiveness in our life will stop our prayer life from being effective. In this, the Bible tells us we need to rely on the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. I said a little while ago, He is our helper. In Luke 21, verses 14 and 15, Jesus says, Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you will answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict nor resist. And so when Jesus told them about getting along with people and how to confront them and how to make things right, and the disciple says, increase our faith, Jesus said to them, if you got faith like a mustard seed, you can say to this sycamore tree, be plucked up by the roots. It is very significant that Jesus says you can say to the sycamore tree or the mulberry tree, it's according to what translation you're looking at, but the Historians tell us in the Bible commentaries that the mulberry tree over there had a big root system. A lot of times the issues that we deal with aren't always on the surface. They are underground. And so Jesus says that we can pull up the tree with its root, the underlying issues, and it will bring healing that will last more than a day, more than a month, but it will bring healing that will last a long time. Not only did he say about pulling up the roots, but Jesus emphasized the size of the faith. It doesn't take large faith, but it just matters that our faith is genuine, real faith. There is fake purses in this life. People can sell you a fake Dunaberg purse, or you can buy a real one. The fake one costs a lot less, but it will tear up. We have fake watches and watches that have a real quality to them. But Jesus said in Luke 17, verses 5 and 6, The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it will obey you. No matter who we are, what kind of faith we have, our faith is always challenged. The devil wants to test us with our faith. We can have faith today and then two weeks from now we can have our faith begin to wane away, get weaker. Jesus on one occasion had called all 12 of his disciples and sent them out with power to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to heal lepers, to raise crippled people and they had did all of these things. And later, uh, a few months later, Jesus took three of his disciples and they went up on top of a mountain and there Jesus was transfigured before them. He had a conversation with Moses and with Elijah. And then when he come down the mountain, the other nine disciples were there and people had heard about the disciples casting out demons. And so they brought this man, brought his son to the disciples and they had tried to cast out the devil and they could not but they had done this before on other occasions. And so when Jesus come down, the father of this child, run to Jesus and he said, well, let's read verses 20, 23 and 24 of Mark 9. He asked Jesus to cast him out and Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help me my unbelief. Almost always, faith can be mingled with unbelief. This young man cried out, this dad cried out, I have faith, but help the part of me that doesn't believe. He had faith when he brought the, his son to the disciples, and he was disappointed. 
And so when Jesus come down, he thought that maybe he was going to get disappointed again. Jesus takes what faith we have in this life and he multiplies it. He works with what we have. And so the devil tries to discourage us. In fact, if we read the story, it says that when the man was bringing his son to Jesus, the devil convulsed him and the boy fell down on the ground and started foaming at the mouth and wallowing. And the devil was trying to do this because he was putting on a show and trying to get Jesus to question his own faith. But Jesus walked up to the boy, he rebuked the devil, and the devil come out of him, and then he picked him up and he gave him back to his dad. Mustard seed faith. Not the size of it, but it's real, genuine. Jesus had absolutely no doubt in his life. And the last part of that, I'm not going to read the scriptures again, but then Jesus says, which of you having a servant in the field? You send him out early in the field. Let's just change the story a little bit. He said he's plowing, he's working, he's planting, he's feeding the sheep, he's feeding the oxen, he's picking beans, he works all day long. I can tell you, faith is not always exciting. We don't kill a giant every day. We're not always out there on the sea and the wind is blowing and we're rebuking the winds. We're not always praying for somebody to be healed of cancer and seeing them healed. Sometimes it's just every day the routines of life. Paul knew what it was like to have the routine thing of life. In fact, the Bible says he spent two years in prison in Caesarea just locked up, having a trial date and sitting back in prison, having a trial date and going back to prison. That had to be very boring for a man that had preached in hundreds of cities, preached about Jesus, seen demons cast out of people, seen lepers healed, seen lame people walk. In fact, in the city of Ephesus, it said God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. They would take handkerchiefs from his body, things that had touched him, and take them to people, and demons would be cast out. But life was not glamorous on this occasion. Two years in prison, and Paul just kept waiting patiently. In our life, when things aren't glamorous, we need to make sure that we maintain our relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to pray on a regular basis. We need to read his word on a regular basis. And then after this two years, he got sent to Rome, where he spent two more years in prison. But because Paul kept his relationship with Jesus Christ, because he prayed regularly, while he was there, people would come visit him from the churches that he had planted and left. And so they would come and find out how to handle problems in their lives. There in prison, because he kept his relationship with Jesus Christ, when things could have been so boring, so mundane, he kept the relationship going, his light continued to shine. There in prison, he wrote us the book of Philippians. There in prison, he wrote the book of Colossians. There in prison, he wrote the book of Philemon. He did all of these things in prison when things could have been so boring and so mundane. So no matter what goes on in our life, every day living. Keep your relationship with people going well. When it begins to break down, engage them, fix it. Remember, we do it with gentleness. We don't quarrel. We're looking to have unity in the church. We want the church to be strong. Remember that it takes only mustard seed faith, not very big. It just needs to be genuine. And then if our faith is not really all is genuine, but yet we got a little bit of unbelief, Believe that Jesus wants to work with what we have. And then believe in the times of life when it's just routine. Just keep doing the routines of serving Jesus. Praying, reading, sharing Jesus. And our life will be fruitful. This is what it says in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 14. This is why Paul was in prison. He wrote this letter from prison. He said, I press toward the goal. Even in prison, he's pressing on. He's praying. He's looking to Jesus. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He kept forgetting the things that was behind. 
the successes and the failures, and he kept pressing forward. He knew the words of Jesus, which said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And Paul in prison could say with confidence what God had spoken into his life, and he had spoken into Joshua's life all the way back in the book of Joshua, chapter 1. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And we can say, the Lord is our helper. I will never have to be afraid. And also remember that the Bible tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we look to you now because every one of us needs faith for everyday living. We face difficult things in life. We need to heal relationships with people. We need to fix relationships with people. Your word gives us insight on how to do this. Your word gives us wisdom and it encourages us when we hear that you give the answer of how to deal with the situations we place face in this life. It's also encouraging Jesus to know that you work with people that didn't have, have perfect faith, but they did have faith. You worked with what they had. Also, Jesus, we understand, like Paul, sometimes we feel like we are in a holding pattern. Two years in the jail cell in Caesarea, but you had not forsaken him. He was there being tempered. He was there having his faith checked. And then when he went to Rome, and he was there two more years. He wrote four of the epistles that's in the New Testament. He encouraged hundreds of people to come to see him. May we have everyday living that will always exalt you, Jesus. And may our light touch others so that you can be glorified in our life and in this world. We ask it in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just remember, everyday living with Jesus Christ, sometimes it seems boring, but your life will touch you.